I'm always looking for new learning models, learning ideas, knowledge learning different, knowledge lead to learning, learnings about the application of knowledge. And Robert Greenleaf, who's best known for his work on servant leadership, has come up with a list of which I think these three of a greater number, I think it's five from the top of my head, are worth looking at. I'm going to look at them in turn, but briefly. The first he suggests of the three fundamentals around knowledge is that we don't really know of a lot of what we think we know. That's challenging. That's very definite. He also says, and I'll go into these individually in a moment, knowledge gets lost and has to be rediscovered. I find it hard to argue against this, and Robert Greenleaf devoted his life to these issues. I always think it's irritating when people dismiss, oh, no, I don't agree with that. Well, you put 30, 40 years into it and write loads of books and put yourself out there. He knows this stuff. And the last of these three is new conscious knowledge disturbs our feelings of certainty about what we know. These are big issues and they all deserve more time than I'm going to devote to them now because I know that people who do drop into these sorts of podcasts and videos don't have a lot of time to spare. So let's look at them in turn. And before I do, let's remind ourselves of the book from which they come. Greenleaf, best known for being a servant leader, writer and developer of both the theory and particularly the practice of servant leadership. Greenleaf didn't just devote his time to servant leadership um, very directly. Of course, learnings about leadership, they are the same thing in many respects. He was also a person who was interested in wider issues amongst them learning. So let's look at these one at a time. He suggests we don't really know a lot of what we think we know. Now that's challenging. What that means for me is that we take a lot of our learning for granted, that we don't deliberately and consciously reflect upon what we know. And for that reason, we exaggerate, I think, and I agree with him by the way, we exaggerate what we think we know because we haven't looked at it closely enough to recognize that it's probably not as much as we think and it's not as ordered and it's not so um, practicable. It's just out there somewhere because we don't visit it. It becomes less clear and more fragmented or at worst still remembered incorrectly if we don't go back to it. If we don't say, hey, what is it that I know? It might sound a bit daft, but it isn't really. Because there's this wonderful term, isn't there? I think Thomas Davenport said it, he might have said it on the back of someone else. If only we knew what we know. So yes, I think we don't really know a lot of what we think we know. The value of physical notes are important here too for me because we would believe we know a lot more of what we know if we had some notes. I constantly come across people who say, yeah, I read that book. What do you remember of it? Uh, nothing. Oh, yeah, I went on this course. Um, what did you, you, did you learn things? Yeah, I, I learned some new stuff. What did you learn? Which is very often what people associate knowledge with. They are different. Knowing something, knowing how to drive is different from showing how you can drive. Knowing anything is different to learning. And that is the application of that knowledge. So people, in my view, ordinary humans, unlike me, uh -huh, um, don't tend to think about knowledge and learning in sufficiently conscious, deliberate ways. They just think, oh, it's out there somewhere. I must know it. So we need an appetite to gain new knowledge, to top up what it is that we've lost or that we know less well. We need to revisit, we need to note, we need to retain. We may well find we know more on some things, not less, by revisiting. So yes, Robert Greenleaf, I believe you're right. We don't really know a lot of what we know, but we could, by looking more closely, discover we know more about certain things than we thought we did. So to reacquaint ourselves with what we think we know could be both a positive building thing as much as a finding holes thing. So what about is number two? I told you I'd go through these quickly. This for me is quickly. Knowledge gets lost and has to be rediscovered. Surely that's the case. We can't go around consciously all the time, every minute of the day, reflecting on what it is that we know in order not to lose it. I know life has to go on, but it's about balance. To do none of this means that it does get lost. Now it gets lost and then he says it has to be rediscovered. Well, I'll go with that. But I suspect a lot more of the time it gets lost and doesn't get rediscovered. The effort isn't made to refine it, to revisit it, to refine it, to revise it, to update it. And for that reason, a lot of the clarity and completeness of knowledge tends to get lost. It does. And it hurts. We are, most of us know, knowledge workers. 
And knowledge, as I say in a bit, is critical to our competence, our credibility, to the projection of what we can do. Knowledge is a commodity. And if we lose the value of that commodity, as I'll explain a bit more later, that can hurt. So rediscovery is all very well, but we may discover that what we knew is not so important now as it was when we knew it, <laughs> if that makes sense. The more acquainted, reacquainted we become with what we have known, uh, either last week or 30 years ago, the more valuable it is to know what learning still valid and what needs to be updated. So finally, of the three, new conscious knowledge disturbs our feelings of certainty about what we know. New conscious knowledge disturbs our feelings of certainty about what we know. As I said earlier, our credibility, our professional projection is as knowledge workers. I know this, I can do this as a consequence of what I know, I can therefore help you. That's where we're from. We're not craftspeople anymore. We don't build things, we don't make things, we don't make wicked baskets, some of us do, but not very many. We don't make the stuff we used to. We're not craftsmen. We are knowledge workers that project competence through knowing and being able to do things on that knowledge. So if the value of the knowledge that we hold or have held is questioned, that can hurt. No, I take that as a personal insult. We use the learning word as an insult. You've got a lot to learn. Is, is, an, is, is an insult. And again, knowledge, learning, similar, different. Knowledge is good, but knowledge that isn't turned into behaviors is not learning. So new conscious knowledge does disturb our feelings of certainty about what we know. And what can we do about that? Well, we can either find some sand to bury our head in and say, I knew this back in the 1980s, therefore it's got to be as valid now in the 2020s. That isn't always the case. It can be, but it isn't always the case. Surely we've got to be updating ourselves constantly. This is the reality of CPD, of continuous professional development. We've got to have an appetite to recognize that um, new conscious knowledge can have real value and can have a greater value in the here and now than the knowledge and the learning that we've gone around with for many decades. Charles Handy, always worth tracking down and reading, once said that there is value in the learned past tense, but that there's greater learning in the learning. So people who are learning are of greater value to themselves and to those they work with than those who are learned. And too many people talk too much about too long back in the past. Oh, well, I did this then, I knew that then, and I know this and the hang on a minute. Where's the evidence of new knowledge since 1990-something, of new learning since 1980-something, for instance? So it's all about appetite. It's all about a desire to recognise that the knowledge we have, yes, has value, but though we don't get too precious about it, we're prepared to accept that it has a sell-by date, that we need to update ourselves, that there's a wealth of new learning based upon new knowledge to be had out there and that that's a dynamic process and we must be learning people not purely the learned last bit of um, information really is for me is where to find me um, various places there they all are i won't uh, say any more than podcast video channel um, email the usual sort of stuff websites all that sort of thing so you, you find a lot of my stuff of which there's an increasing amount um, out there um, if you go looking for it